The author said, may Allah have mercy upon him. Among what Ahlu Sunnah confirms is actually seeing Allah Ta'ala with the eye of the head. This means that it is a true and literal sighting. Mentally, this is possible because Allah exists, but from the point of view of the religious texts, it shall inevitably occur in the hereafter. So the scholar said, the judgment of seeing Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, it depends on from what perspective you want to talk. If you want to talk about from the perspective of the intellect, without considering any religious text, then the judgment of seeing God is that it is possible. It's not impossible to see Allah Ta'ala. If you want to talk about from the point of view of the religious texts, then the judgment of seeing God is that it is necessary, meaning it is inevitable. It shall certainly happen. Allah Ta'ala will be seen. Most definitely, that's the correct belief. More specifically, it will occur for the believers when they are in paradise. In fact, it is the greatest pleasure of paradise. What's the benefit of knowing the difference between um, whether seeing him is possible or necessary? Or why should we go into the detail of saying that seeing God is possible or necessary, mentally possible, religiously necessary, etc. Because some people who do not believe in our religious texts, they talked about seeing God also. So what will you do when? I mean, I've never had such a conversation, but you find yourself in a conversation where someone's saying the wrong thing about seeing God. He, he says it's impossible. It's not impossible. Uh, even if he doesn't take by the Quran and the Sunnah. You can still use what you know of mental evidence that we learned in our religion without having to refer to a single ayah of the Quran or a single hadith of the Prophet. But, if you're not using religious texts, you can't prove more than that seeing God is possible. You can't prove to someone that seeing God is necessary and inevitable without referring to religious texts. More specifically, it will occur for the believers when they are in paradise. In fact, it is the greatest pleasure of paradise. We spoke about the proofs of that last week, so I don't have to repeat them, inshallah. Although the believers will be in a place, their seeing him will be without Allah having a form i.e., a body, without him having a body or shape. Without him having a form means without having a body or a shape. And without Allah being in a particular place. And without him being everywhere. This means that they see Allah and Allah is neither in a place or a direction. He's not in any place. He's not in any direction. He's not everywhere and he's not anywhere. Allah Ta'ala is not anywhere. He exists without a place and he will be seen without being seen in a place. It is the seer who will be in a place, meaning the creation, the created one, the believer in paradise. He's in a place seeing one who's not in a place. In other words, since Allah is different from the creations, seeing him is different from the way the creation is seen. Denying the sighting is not blasphemy, but a major sin and deviance. If someone claims to be a Muslim and denies that Allah can be seen, then he's not charged with blasphemy. But 
he is counted as having a deviant belief. I did meet one person in my life who denied that Allah Ta'ala could be seen. MashaAllah. I met him at a supermarket, oddly enough. I don't even know how we got into that discussion at the supermarket. It is also necessary to believe in the dwelling forever and ever, i.e. everlastingly in paradise, in reference to the believers, or hell in reference to the blasphemers, not in reference to the believers when it comes to hell. So notice something about what the Sheikh did in his Mukhtasar. He mentioned believing in paradise and hell already. But then he came back to mention specifically believing in the dwelling forever in paradise or hell. So this is a case by itself, different from actually believing in paradise and believing in hell. The perpetuity of paradise and hell and their people. As for the Muslims who enter hell, they will eventually exit hell then enter paradise and never leave it. That's because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَخْرُجُ مِنَ النَّارِ مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَفِي قَلْبِهِ وَزْنُ ذَرَّةٍ مِنْ إِيمَانٍ Whoever said لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ will come out of hell as long as there is in his heart a particle's weight of faith. Denying the everlastingness of paradise or hell is blasphemy. That's definitively blasphemy. Definitively blasphemy. However, denying that they are presently existing is not blasphemy. Rather, it is sinful and deviance. So if someone believes that paradise and hell are not now existing, but that they will exist and then be everlasting. And he says that whatever is mentioned about the story of Adam in Al-Jannah in the Quran refers to a garden on the earth. Because the meaning of the word Al-Jannah is garden. Jannah is not actually literally paradise. The word Jannah means garden. Like Bustan, a garden. What means paradise is Firdaus. You know that special place in paradise? Al-Firdaus, that's paradise. You can hear the sound of it. Firdaus, that's paradise. That's in Al-Jannah. That place in Al-Jannah. So if you want to be very literal, Al-Jannah is the garden. And in that garden, there is Al-Firdaus, paradise. That special place in that garden, which is the interior of paradise and the highest part of paradise meaning it's the, it's the center of paradise. Al-Firdaus is the center of paradise, the interior, and it's the highest, it's the apex of paradise, and it is the best place uh, there. Al-Firdaus. So someone said, what those texts in the Quran about Adam and his wife being in Al-Jannah refers to being in a garden on earth. Then he made a ta'wil for this ayah that we don't agree with and the scholars didn't charge him with blasphemy for that. It is also blasphemy to deny that they are physically real. That paradise and hell are physically real. Denying that is blasphemy because that's just denying the verses of the Quran that describe in paradise um, Meat. The meat of birds, the flesh of fowl, if you want. So if that's not real, then what does that mean? That's why if someone denies that paradise and hell are real, that's blasphemy. Believing that they are only spiritual or allegorical is blasphemy. The Shaykh usually takes the opportunity here, Rahimahullah, to mention um, that Ibn Taymiyyah said that hellfire comes to an end, and that's blasphemy. And also his apprentice, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah, 
He said so, and he agreed with him that hellfire comes to an end. I don't want to go into that now, into a long spill about that, because I want to continue with what we have here. But usually, the sheikh would definitely stop here and mention that Ibn Taymiyyah said that. That's blasphemy. Among the most essential Islamic creeds, besides believing in Allah, is the belief in Allah's angels. They are honorable beings created from light. They are subtler than air, so we do not sense their presence. That means they are lighter than air. They have wings as few as two and as many as 600. So all the angels have wings. Allah Ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi fatiri samawati wal aldi ja'ili malaikati rusulan uli ajnihati mathna wa thulatha wa ruba' It means, a praise be to Allah Ta'ala, creator of heavens and earth, the one who made the angels messengers with wings. Two by two, wings, about the wings. Two by two, three by three, four by four. Yazidu fil khalqi ma yasha. And he increases his creation with whatever he wills. That means he gives them even more wings than that. They do not have gender, so they're not males or females, but they may take the shape of males without private parts because he's not really a man. They do various tasks without making mistakes. They never make a mistake, ever. They do not eat, sleep, marry, and they never disobey Allah. That's what's correct. From that we know that Iblis was not an angel, for he was created from fire and he disobeyed Allah. Two ways we knew he wasn't an angel. He was created from fire and he disobeyed Allah. The angels are created from light and they do not disobey Allah. Also, the jinn are males and females, and the angels are not males or females. In fact, he was a jinn, may Allah's dam be upon him. I mean, 